Creating an ocean battle, not the easiest thing in Unity. Good thing we're awesome. I'm demoing the game behind me right now. What we're going to focus now on is the tiles. We need a way to be able to use the tiles or manipulate them to show what the player has guessed. And let's also light stuff on fire, uh, depending on hit and if we have sunk a ship. So, you know, all great stuff. If you're interested in tile design game board levels, this is for you. If you want to check out the earlier portions, make sure to watch those videos and assets and code are in the description. I might have already said that. Regardless, let's get going. To start us off, let's do a demo to kind of gauge where we are at. We've put quite a lot into this and we can work our way from there. Boom and boom. I'm just going to hit play and see if we throw if it throws an error. All right, so we should be able to place our ships. I'm not sure if we've enabled this next button, though, to keep working next. All right. And so that's where we're at. We have a lot of this stuff in place for the next. Uh, for the computer to take their turn, but we need to make sure it is actually allowing us to move on to that step. I'm going to undo this. So let's check out what is going on with our next button. Whoop, and whoop, and whoop. So we need to see here. Here's We already did this, right, on next, and here is the function itself. If the ship index is less than or equal to ship's length minus two. So if we have ships ready to go, what we should do instead is check that a ship is on the game board. And we actually added that. On game board, what do we do? We count touch tiles dot count. What's touch tiles? Well, remember touch tiles is going to be updated on collision. So as the piece is dropped onto the board, we will have the touch tiles be the list that is actually getting updated. So we know the tiles that it is in contact with, that the ship is present on top of. And so to do that, I'm just, where shall we place it? Uh, clear, let's go ahead and do it. Right here, nah, that would be make more sense right above. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and. Well, I can just do on collision. On collision, enter. And then what am I going to do? Well, with that object I collided, I want to know if it's a tile. So I'm going to get the tag. If it is a tile, good news, that means the ship has, well, been placed on the board. So we're going to use our touch tiles list and we're going to add that collid collided object to it. Okay. We could also just keep a rough count depending on how we decide to use this later. It is nice to have this handy, though, so we can have access to the tiles, to the game objects that we're currently in contact with on the board. Now, if it's otherwise, so what if it's a ship? We don't want the player to be able to stack ships on top of each other. So if ship dot game object dot compare tag ship, All right? That's a no, no. So we are going to do a, and I guess we don't need brackets for if statements that just have one line, but oh well, we'll do, let's say ship. Did we make this variable? I want a variable called ship collided equals true. And that way we can keep track if the ship has actually smacked into something else. Although touch tiles, hmm, let's think about this. If the ship has collided with a, another ship, it won't be touching due to our settings because it's not allowed to rotate. It won't be touching all of the tiles necessary because we're keeping track of the ship size. We'll check. Yep. Okay, let's make sure ship size is public because we're going to set that for each of the ships. And then we're going to get rid of this because if it is collided, it won't be touching all of the necessary tiles anyways. And then clear touch tiles will occur each time the ship is getting relocated. So each time we are setting the position of our ship, 
that is when we would clear the touch tiles. So let's go ahead and do it right here, right? Because we are setting the position. So clear tile list, we'll go here. Because we know they, uh, we are now moving this to a new location and we want to clear out that list. Okay, that all looks good. So now we can head back to our game manager and we want next ship clicked. Okay, here we are. We have all that all ready to rock. But what we want to do now, instead of keeping track of this ship index as we were, we can go ahead and check that the last ship has successfully been placed by calling the function that we just did. So I'm going to clear out this if, and what we're going to do instead is do not ship script dot on game, oops, capitalize though, on game board and boom, boom. And then that will let us know that the ship has been successfully placed. So if it is, mm, oh, if it is on the game board, gotcha. So if it is on the game board, we'll do this. I'm actually going to flip this though. Yeah, definitely actually. So we're going to have this be in our else. What we'll do is if they are not currently on the game board, we're going to turn the ship red. But if they are, that will be in the else. And so we're going to use the if that we had before. So if the ship has been successfully placed, now we want to know if we're at the end of the index. And that's what we were doing before. We weren't checking if the ship was uh, successfully placed, we were just checking if we're at the end of the list. Now we're going to make sure that ship is successfully placed. And if it is right, because this would be ship on game board. So that's false. This is a negation operation. So if this is true, it will run the else and we're going to say, okay, that's true. Where are we in this list? And as long as ships dot length is ships index is less than or equal to ships dot length minus one or minus two. We're doing minus two because of the ability we're going to be able to place the last ship. Now, boop, boop. if that is true, then we can go ahead and do ship index plus plus, right? And then we're going to update the ship script to be the ships we just switched into ships and ship index, which we had just updated. We want to get the component. What component the ship script? Boom. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and indicate that the ship's ready to go. Let's also, though, add one more else. And this else will be if the entire round is over. So if we've placed the ship successfully and we are not at our index is not less than ships dot length minus two, that means we just placed our last ship. And in that case, we're going to need an else statement. Let me get rid of this. And what we're going to have for our else will be the hiding of the game objects that are involved or the HUD elements, heads up display elements that the user has been clicking on to place their ship. So let's go ahead and hide those because now that they've placed all their ship, their time to, it's time to play the actual game itself. And I'm going to be doing this through set active object false, which will hide these. I'm just going to copy and paste because we're going to do this for the next button. Oh, I think I named them, let's see, BTN maybe? Yep. And then let's do it for the wood dock. What's going on here? Oh, look at that. I want wood dock, it's not a deck. Ah, a deck would have worked, but it's a dock. All right, and then um, let's change the top text because it's now the player's trying to guess.
Gus and enemy tile. Sounds good to me. And then we're going to have a Boolean just to keep track of if the setup is complete, which will be called setup complete. And that will now be equal to true. One other thing we'll want to do now that we've placed all their ships, we're going to hide them because the player doesn't need to see their ships when they're clicking on a tile to guess where the enemy is at. And there we are. We'll set them they'll we'll set them active to false, right? They're not going to be active. Awesome. I really want to go ahead and implement the color functions, which will allow us to notify the users of issues if through the placements of their ships by well flashing their or changing their items color briefly. Else if I lost an else here, this content we do want in the else, as I was explaining, right? If the ship length, if we've gone through all the ships, that's when we would commence with ending the setup. So that would be here. They've successfully placed their last ship where they successfully placed a ship. That ship is the last one they're placing. Then we do this. Okay. Now let's work on our flash color stuff. And we're going to start that with the ship script. Zoop, zoop, zoop. And yeah, right down here will be perfect for that. And for flash color, keep in mind that for flash color, keep in mind, it, it will be a void. And it will take a color as a argument. What I'm doing now is for each material, and I'm just saying matte in all materials, we haven't defined, but that's going to be all the materials present on the object when it is initialized. What are we going to do with that? We're going to do material.color. So we're going to set up each material to a new color. What's it going to be equal to? All colors. Oh, that sounded wrong. All colors. It's going to be equal to the temp color, right? The color that we're passing. Temp color, boom. And then what are we going to do to change this? Well, we if it's only going to be a flash, we're going to want to reset the color. And reset color is going to be pretty similar. It doesn't need a parameter or an argument. So private void reset color. And what this guy is going to do is just change it back to what it was, which is why we stored the initial colors in the first place. So for reset color, I'm going to do int i is going to be equal to zero. And then for each material mat in all materials. So for each color in our list, what are we going to do? Well, mat.color, the colors material will be equal to all colors, which again is an array that we'll create uh, plus plus. So we're iterating I each time. And what we need now, why this is so confused is we don't have in all materials. And we're going to do that way up here as a material list. Once we do so, though, we're going to need to make sure to get that list or to populate that list in our start function, which means we can finally add it back. So first, let's start with that list, though, as stated material list. Uh, it can be private. And then we get, we're going to populate it. And I might actually put my lists. Oh, I mean my arrays. Ah, I'm getting ahead of myself. OK, now we're going to populate our array. Our list, though, is the colors. There we go. Color, all colors. And boom. So I'm going to put these 
this together because it just seems cleaner. And boom, boom, okay. All colors. Now let's populate this using the start method. Boom. So on start, I'm gonna say all. So that's gonna be it for materials. We're just grabbing all of them on initialization and then colors we're gonna loop through to grab. And this for loop, and then perfect. And that will populate the color list. This is all looking good. All right, let me just, let's glance through this and then we need, oops, oh, ah, uh, materials. Let's now go ahead and make use of our color flashing uh, methods. Here I am and we've already well, kind of used it. Let's place this where it should be, which would be if the this yellow is going to be on a new ship. So I'm going to right click and do a copy on this guy. And then when this will be used is when a new ship selected, just to highlight to the user what ship they have selected. I'll do that right here in this if. So paste yellow. And then here is when they uh, ha their ship is not fully on the game board or it's sitting on another ship. So I'm going to flash red at this point. Uh, this is odd. Oh, one more thing. Okay. We want this four to make the ships disappear only once they are done. So else this should have come up here with everything else. Once they're done, once the player, the person, the human actually playing this is done placing them, we hide their ships so we can then allow them to click on the game board where they want to attack. I would say we definitely should save everything and then save everything, then save everything. And it's a long past time. Let's give it another try. Let's shrink all this down and ba-da. Now we've added a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to start with our game manager. Game manager. Let's see if there's any empty. Yep. The ward. Oh yeah, because I wrote deck and I went dock. Fire prefab. We don't even have that fire prefab yet, but I can go ahead and we can edit it some later. Actually, edit it some later. Why not just do it now and be done? So let me reset that. It's going to be way too big if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's pretty large. So let's I cut it down by a third. I think I'm going to do 0 0.32, 0 0.32, 0 0.32. So I guess a little less than a third. And then it will have a script and all the script is going to do is kind of make it flicker and change colors, which I think is kind of cool. So uh, fire script as always creative there's our prefab if we want to tag we can it wouldn't be necessary at this moment though so let me drop that there we have our fire we have it set up let me just drag it into our prefab folder original prefab it is and then let's just edit the name make sure everything is super clear there we are rename file there we are all right back here and there we are okay so that's done let's see what else we gotta get going here Ooh, fire prefab that's why we did that that would make sense click and drop Boop. Text, player, and enemy. Okay, let's look at the HUD. And game manager. So here is the player text, but I don't think, nope, we want the player ship count text. <laughs> okay, my great naming as always, but at least we know what it is. Ship text, and then the enemy ship count is what I called that one. Not exactly consistent, but I'll accept it. And those are all filled out. Did we add, let's take a look at our enemy, enemy missile prefab. Let's go ahead and drop that in there. And then let's take a look at our ships real quick. So our ship size, for instance, our battleship has four pegs normally, and our carrier ship size would be five, and our cruise would be three, because there's two threes. There's the sub and the cruise that are three. And then there is the destroyer, which for a big name is the little guy, two. 
Wait, doc is good to go there. All right, let's hit run and uh, see what works and what doesn't. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Let me drop and next. Interesting. So for some reason, it does not believe it is on five tiles as if we set it. I believe that's what we set it to. Yep, ship size five. So it'd be good to know what that is on. Let's take a look at the council. Tile tag is not defined. Oh, right. We should also do that. So the tiles, all tiles, and all of our tiles don't have a tag. So I'm just going to hold shift, select all of them, do tag, and oh, I need to make it and make a tag. Boom. So now I can add it, hold shift, select all of these guys, do tag and do a tile tag. That will help some. Now for the ships, did we add? Nope, I don't think so. Okay, let's see if there's a ship tag already. There's not, so let me go ahead and make that as well. Because we're gonna need that on all of them. Zoop, and one, two, three, four, five. Ship, and great. Okay, let's try all this again. Clear that out, hit run. And notice how it goes yellow. Uh oh, it's never going back apparently. <laughs> nope, nope, it's not. Oh, but all the HUD elements does disappear. Guess an enemy tile, I should capitalize that. Okay, so let's first though make sure that the yellow doesn't stay yellow forever. That's supposed to just be like a warning or a heads up or a look over here thing. We need to be resetting the color. And so for that aspect, we're gonna wanna zoop and nope, that's the ship script is what we're going to want to take a look at because when we change the color we're just going to have it automatically invoke the next thing which would be to reset the color so upon flashing the color right flash means momentarily so then we're going to invoke reset color and when do i want to run that well i'll say after 0 0.5 float so 0 0.5 seconds half a second is when we're we'll go ahead and flip the color back to that original color Make sure we save all this. The color should work now, which is great. What we want to do is, I'm now in the game manager, we want to make sure that the tiles are actually clickable after that, right? We have stuff set up to take care of it, to be able to drop a missile and the enemy to drop a missile. However, to do that, to start it all, we'll have to be able to, after clicking on a tile, after setting up the game, let the uh program let the game know hey we want to drop a missile so let's go ahead now and check if setup is complete so we've already done that right if setup complete and 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 it's player's turn what do we do we drop a bomb well we haven't done that yet so if setup is complete we're gonna say tile Let's make, if setup's complete, we're going to, so we need the vector three out of our tile. So we're gonna do vector three tile, BOS sure, tile dot transform. Because we're gonna use the tile's position to target the bomb, yeah, fancy. So we have vector three tile position. Let's add for the missile, we want it a little bit off, kind of like we were doing with the enemy was missile. You want to add 15 to the Y axis. And then let's go ahead and say if player turn is equal to true, but that we would already know right here. So that seems redundant. Yeah, let's not do that. Let's go ahead and do player turn equals false, right? And then we can go ahead and instantiate a missile prefab for our player. And perfect. And else if, right? So in other case, else if setup is not complete, what do we want to do? Well, we want to place the ship, which would make a lot of sense. So this is looking good and we will be able to progress in the game with this. 
let's take a look set click tile my only issue is what if they click on a ship or they miss a tile what if rotate ship set click tile is not actually set so clicked tile let's do for set click tile for rotate boom 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 let's only allow this if click tile does not equal null. Or we can also do if, oops, click tile equals null. We don't want them to be able to rotate. Let's just do a return statement. Save all this. Let's go ahead and uh, test out the game. Clear all that and run. All right, let's play ships. Next, I love how it lights up yellow. Next. And let's turn this guy and hopefully, yep, it lights up red because it's off the game. Drop and next, next, and next. I got to fix guess an enemy, but click. Boom, M miss, there is no ship. Maybe I should fix my font. Now it would be the enemy's turn and an enemy missile should drop. But victory, we dropped a missile. Congratulations, you have entered the war, sir. sir. <laughs> All right. Let's go take a look at a few things then. We want to make sure the enemy can drop missiles on us. I know, pretty sad. And I got to fix the guess. So game manager, guess, guess, guess. There we are. That was going to drive me nuts. So with the player being able to make it have a turn, it's time to make sure the enemy can have a turn. Although that does not mean great things for us always. We do want the enemy to be able to take a turn. We should add these colors in the fire. But first, enemy hit player. See all these evokes, end enemy turn. We're going to need an end player turn, which let's get going on those right now. They'll both be private voids. And then first thing we're going to want to do for the end of the player turn, we're going to want to hide all of the player ships because. Or we're not going to hide them, we're going to show them because the enemy's going to drop a missile. The player should be able to see their ships if the missile hits. Oh, and we weren't actually even need. Boom, boom, because we can do this just. Ships, I, yep. Set active, and we're going to set active to true. All right. And now we don't have the game objects for the files totally set up the list, but let's go ahead and put in the script because we're going to shortly. We're getting to that point. And so what I'm doing is we're going to want to hide the fires that are within the ships as well when it is uh, or show those fires so the player can see where they've been hit. And then we're going to hide the enemy fires where the player has hit the enemy. And when I say game object fire in enemy fires, that's a variable and we're just using it to iterate through enemy fires list or through player fires list. And then. There we are. And let's go ahead and update the text so we can display the top text saying it's the enemy's turn because this is the end of the players. Oh, actually, let's first update the enemy text in case they lost a ship. And even if they didn't, we'll just keep it up to date this way. Enemy ship count. What did I call it? I know I called it something complicated. Enemy ship account. OK, but what do they call a text? Enemy ship text. Oh, well, that makes sense. All right. Enemy ship text dot text is going to be set equal to. Enemy ship count dot because that's an int to string. All right. Um, oh, and it also is mad about enemy fire. So let's take care of that. We're going to have an enemy fires. We're going to have a player fires. So here's the player fires. Literally just going to copy this because there is one word that we're changing. 
And again, it's to keep track of where they have been actually hit. So that should be good. That should be good. Game object in. Enemy fires now exists. Thought it existed. Just thinking about existing. Oh, enemies fire. There we go. All right. And this is what happens when you live code. Let's now change the top text to be enemies turn. Enemy script NPC turn, which we've already created that method. So we want to run that. We're going to run our color all tiles method because we're going to flip over the colors of the tiles because we will be marking and we haven't created this method yet, which tiles have been uh, struck, which have been previously played. And now let's just make sure too that the game's not over. OK, so obviously we're going to need to add a few functions here, color all tiles and game over. But first, let's go ahead and do the enemy end. I want to show you how close these are. I could have kind of used one function, but I find it better to it makes it more clear not to honestly. So end enemy turn. And professional environment, you might want to think about making this a single function that uses parameters to flip these because obviously these first chunks of code are almost the same, except we're going to flip them, right? False, because for the enemy's turn, to end the enemy's turn, we want the ships to no longer be visible. The player doesn't need to ships see their ships. They need to see the tiles to select one to fire on the enemy. The player doesn't need to see their tiles. The enemy is not trying to hit them at that moment or their fires. They do want to see where they've hit the enemy. So we'll want to see the enemy's fires. Now, we're not going to make sure we update enemy ship text. We're going to update player ship text with player ship count. And then we'll direct the player to select a tile. And then we're going to color all of the tiles. I was just going to say one for the for the player's turn to flip them over. All right. That's good. That's good. Now, if enemy, nope. What do we want to change that to? Well, we want to know if the enemy ship count is less. If enemy ship count is less than one, right? So if they have now no ships left to target their sync count, how many points do they have? You could think of it as if it's less than one. Enemy one. All right. Now let's do this all tiles. We might have to take a look at this less than more than one count because if we start at five and count down for ships, that could be an issue. We can also count up as in points for striking. So we should definitely take a second look at that. But first, let's do the coloring the tiles because we want to have the tiles switch colors as they are interacted with, whether that's the player dropping a missile or the enemy. But then we're going to need to have the game board switch back uh, upon the next entity's turn. You or the uh, computer's turn, the tile should switch to the correct color, whether they have been interacted with that particular player. So we're going to use the tile script, tile script, and all tile script. So I'm going to make a function where we just store all, not a function, a public method, all the tiles scripts, and then just like this. And while we're down here, before we go make this list, let's go ahead and do game over as well. And this we can use the nice thing about this is we're going to make the HUDs game over button up here. And we'll just reload this scene if they click um, if they click the button, the button will just be the replay button. 
and reloading the scene is, well, restarting everything. So let's enable that button to be active. And then let's go ahead and do a click handler on it. So this will be the function that we run when we do that. And all this is going to do is say scene manager load scene. And what scene will we load? Well, we're actually going to load the current scene again because that's the sound of multi stage level or a game. Okay. So obviously we need to add some things. For instance, scene manager, replay button. Uh, winner should be good to go here. Oh, I just put an extra in. And all title, game over. Definitely should be capitalized. Ah, I'm not messing things up. Okay. And then replay button, we're going to have to add that. Scene manager, we can do some refactoring on that. It's going to tell us, yep, that needs to go at the top. There we are. And let's do the replay button and all tiles. This should be for each because it's going to be tiles. OK. So first up here with the HUD, we already have these buttons. I'm just going to copy and paste and say replay button. And then for the tile script, so we already have a few lists down here, right? I'll go ahead and copy one of these guys, except it's not going to be game object. It is going to be tile script, just like so. Now, if it is public, we can just drag them into the game manager and all of the objects for tiles, and it will automatically populate it with the tile script. So I think I said all tile scripts. At least I hope that's what I said. Oh, I lost a dot here, but all tile script. Mm, let's do scripts. That makes more sense. There we are. And invoke end enemy turn. We can start getting these up and going. Invoke end player turn. Yep. And now for the hits, we can set colors, right? So get component and And then I just picked the color I liked. It was a uh, reddish and then kind of a greenish color. Depending on it, it was a miss or a hit. So this is red, green, blue, and then opacity or how transparent it is. Okay, and then we're gonna switch those colors. And then up here, very similar for the hit, except for the hit, we're going to want more of a red color. I'm just going to control C for copy and then whoops, right here in our else for the hit control V and for more of a red color. Well, red, green, blue, 255, zero, zero. That can be one certainly and that can as well. And now let's do up here. Once again, where it says color. And uh, this will be for the sunk. So it's going to be a bit of a different color, actually, just to kind of distinguish it. I liked making it lighter red. And then we will uh, instantiate a fire here as well. Yep, and this is all one notice because it is the player. So switch colors one is all about the player. Let's go ahead and instantiate a fire at this location. There we are. Position, identity. There we are. Normal rotation. Something going. That's looking great. And this is all looking awesome. I'm gonna go all the way up here. Let's save all this. Save. 
and this is a good place to pause. In the next episode, we'll fine-tune the tile somewhat, make sure that the colors properly appear when the turn is flipped from player to enemy, and, well, something something fire. Bum-bum-bum!